Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie yeah, you're very welcome along to Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball. What a treat we have today. Uh, something that's rather depressed me a little bit coming in today when I looked uh, at uh, Wikipedia. T- next year will be 20 years since Charlie Carter ended his days uh, with Kilkenny. Uh, senior hurling team having won three All-Irelands for them and uh, it just does not seem that long. But uh, he wasn't resting on his laurels, as we'll soon find out. He went on to uh, do things on the racing front that were pretty dramatically good over the Christmas. Welcome to Friday Night Racing and Off The Ball, brought to you by Horse Race in Ireland. Love every every racing moment. Visit hri.ie or follow the new Twitter account at HRI Racing. Hashtag every racing moment. And uh, I'm, this is Johnny Ward uh, stepping in for Ger Gilroy today. And we're delighted, as I said, to have Charlie Carter on the line. Charlie, does it feel like 20 years since you hung up your proverbial boots for Kilkenny? No, Johnny. No, it only seems like the other day, but unfortunately, time flies. So it does. And it's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's mad That's that you've mad. you've waited twenty years to finally give an exclusive on what happened. Uh, nah, look at <laughs> a lot, lot of water under the bridge since then, Johnny. So uh, look at um, they were happy days too. Yeah, it's actually just just reading back. Um, I mean, I remember it being such a big story at the time, but you were actually thirty two, and you were kind of saying this. You're implying that your love had slightly gone out of the game at the time. Yeah, look, it's sure that's, that's the way I ended up. I always said if I if I wasn't enjoying, I lived seven miles from Nolan Park, and if I wasn't enjoying the trip in and the trip out, it was time to slip off, Jenny. So um, I was hurt well at the time, and look, it's well documented. Uh, I was hurt well, things didn't work out, and I mean, when I wasn't enjoying, I said it was either me or Brian was going to go, and I didn't expect Brian to go. No, and he's still there too. <laughs> he's still there. <laughs> you'll, be de- yeah. you'll, you'll be delighted with the photo we have of you. I mean, we we could have gone for something recent, but we've gone for you looking absolutely in your prime, hurl in hand, looks like Crow Park. Um, you had some days. Uh, sorry, I, I actually I can't see it, so it's, um, look at it, it. It was magic time, and I suppose we caught the start of a great Kilkenny team. You mm. know what I mean? We got to All Ireland in '98 again, obviously, and. Uh, after he came in through the back door and beat us, and then we went back next year and Cork beat us be a point and probably won the Dower Stall Irons of all time. But you know, we regrouped again in 2000, and there was nothing said all year. It was a strange atmosphere. You know, we didn't, we were just driven the same year to get back and put a few wrongs right. And, um, you mean, that was the day we won the All Ireland in 2000. You mean, it was an unforgettable day, you know? And we will talk hurling uh, towards the end of the show. We had James Gehill on earlier on OTBAM. You can get that. Um, you can get the replay of that obviously online. And uh, he was talking about Galway against Offaly in the Walsh Cup the weekend. Two Kilkenny men uh, at the respective helms there. And we will get a bit of views from Charlie later on about the hurling championship of 2022, which promises to be amazing. But Charlie, there's only one place to uh, go to now, and that's the 28th of December, 12 o'clock, high noon, maiden hurdle. Two of the most iconic colours in sport, that of Rich Ritchie with Haranzu ha- Derry finishing second and the Kilkenny colours of 25 to 1 how you bud making all the running having been backed in from 40 to 1 winning by 6 lengths how did this compare to your very good days on the hurling pitch? Um, obviously two different uh, two different sports but uh, Jim Johnny it was as good a day I ever had in racing anyway that's for sure now um, you 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 not only owned the horse, and a lot of us, uh, you know, have had the fortune of owning a leg of a horse that won. But you actually bred him as well, Charlie. I bred him, Johnny. Yeah, I, I um, back in I used to be, have half breeds here on the farm, on the family farm, and uh, about two thousand, I decided to take a trip up to Tattersall. and I ended up buying two foals. I bought a Sadler's foal, a Gelder or Cold foal, and this foal by Anshan, who was from the family of Papillon. At the time, uh, it wasn't long after winning the Grand National. So I brought home the, brought home the two of them. I resold the, the Sadler's Hall, and I kept the mayor and raised her. And she was good enough to win the mayor's maiden in ace one day. And she was placed a few times. And um, after that, I bred over. And sure, uh, she had a few falls. Some of them had won. And then I had this beneficial filly. And, you know, she was, you know, you're trying to, I was trying, I'm a seller. I breed and sell. But uh, I've been a, I won't say that there was nothing wrong with being the beneficial part of it, only that she was handy at the time. So I had the decision to make her bring her to the sales and she'd probably not worth a whole lot or I'd take the plunge and run her. So I took the plunge anyway and it's probably as, as good a move as I ever made. Um, she won a find a fine first time out in Drummahan and I sold her on to England and um, 
a man by the name of Stuart Edmonds trained her. Mm. And she won eight races, uh, three black type. And I never forget, it was down in Limerick uh, at Christmas. Uh, I, I had been training at uh, Martins of Wexford the year before, and we had won the county final down there. And we decided to go down to Limerick for a couple of nights. And um, I remember just walking well, into the bookies. I came out after she won. She won in Taunton by about 20 lengths. And I can still hear the commentator saying, uh, Maria's benefit first and the rest are nowhere. And um, it wasn't that she had won, but the fact, you know, Johnny, when you're a breeder and trying to get a little bit of black type up on the top of the page, what it was worth, you know what I mean? It wasn't for the, the few bob I, I probably won off her that day, but I knew that, you know, you're always trying to keep that black type up on top of the page. And, and uh, well, after that, then, look, they had this Milan and he went to the sales, didn't meet his reserves. So it's the case of going the road again. And... Um, Brought him back down to James Dyle, who had trained Maria's benefit down in uh, in Ascarty, himself and Ellen Dyle's sister. And um, he showed a nice bit of potential early on. And um, we decided to go for a uh, you know, handy handy bumper in Ballon Robe, you know. We, could, we we expect him to, to run a good race, and he did. He was second to a horse called Bron, who incidentally went on to win his maiden hurdle the other day uh, in, in Nace. And the two horses that were behind him, well, the first day one was called Bally Glass. And uh, he actually came out and won a bumper in Sudwell uh, the other day. And the second day, there was a horse called Holland St. George. And uh, he came out and won a, a nice bumper in Musselburgh the other day as well. So who would have thought to have, who would have thought to have bumper in, two bumpers in Ballon Robe in April and May would turn out you know, uh, fairly decent horses, you know? Well, funnily enough, this is the thing. I mean, Ballon Road has produced horses like Mount Leinster, um, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm firmly of the opinion that all tracks and every race course in Ireland can be the place to go for a very good horse from time to time. But you're, you're either very good at this game, very lucky, or a bit of both. Because just looking at the, the if you look at the sales record of how you bud, he went unsold for twenty nine grand reserve in August at the Goss Land Rover sale last year. He went mm. unsold for. Um, if I'm right in saying this, he went unsold for 84 grand reserve in April at Goffs at Punchtown, and then Goffs in the UK went unsold 21st of October for 60 grand, and then he only goes and wins a maiden herd at Leopardstown by six lengths. Uh, you know the story at themselves, Johnny. Um, you would not believe everything you see. <laughs> but to be fair, it's it's quite obvious that. And this is one of the, it's not only in racing, but in life. It's known the right price. You weren't happy to let the horse go unless he met a certain price last year. Look, it, it, it was a certain price on him. It didn't. It, it didn't. It never materialised. And I remember being over in Doncaster, and I have a daughter up in, in Lancaster, which is about three hours up the road. And, and I remember driving up there, and my wife had had gone up there ahead of me going to Doncaster, and uh, I came in. And we're just having a bit tea and a drink. She said, "You're disappointed." I said, "Marie, I am." But I tell you, Father, I said, "I still have. I still think I'm going to hit the horse." I said, "So that's why we always kept faith with him." And um, then we decided to go for a pint of pint uh, in, in Monks Grange. And uh, unfortunately, ran into one of Colin Bowles, the uh, good horse's music drive, who was second to Redemption Day the other day, actually, mm. as well. And um, so, look, at, uh, we hummed in the hall, and we decided we'd head for a maiden hurdle. He had run over, over to, we head for maiden hurdle two miles four. He had run, run well over two miles. He had run well over three miles. So we decided the two mile four was the, the route to go. And uh, he was entered in Nace. We were hoping to run in Nace there about a month ago. But uh, we entered him anyway. But we just felt for a short, a little bit of work. And we would like to have Jack Foley sit on him before he we, you know, before he jumped up from in the parade ring. Yeah. So we headed on to uh, the Corral one morning. And uh, we did two miles and about 11 hurdles. And um, he absolutely gave an exhibition of jumping. And uh, I can still remember Jack coming back and said, Jesus, he says, uh, he said, this, will, this lad will win a maiden hurdle, Larry. He says, uh, I'm not sure whether it be leopards on at Christmas, but I, I won on worse ones, he said. Oh, we all, we all, but Tom Reeves be happy. Uh, the homework was good again, you know. But that's why, you know, once they were overconfident going to leopards on, I wasn't walking into the parade ring and looking over at the trophy and saying, I'll be back to be in 10 minutes or anything, but. I was confident that he run a very good race, Jenny. 
what was the experience like when I know it was it was very disappointing and somewhat controversial to an extent I suppose that Leopardstown didn't have race scores over the Christmas but what was it like even as an owner there and there were members there so there were a few people in the stand what was it like as he is coming to the last at Leopardstown one of the most iconic festivals in, in sport really the Leopardstown Christmas Festival and in your own Kilkenny colours this horse is, is about to jump the last five lengths clear of Willie Mullins train favourite at Leopardstown well, it was like this now. There was myself and my first cousin, Jerry Purcell, who incidentally bred put the kettle on. Oh, wow. Uh, we're, we're standing in the stands, and I looked across before the race, and I said, Joseph Jack said he was going to be fairly forward, but Jerry, he's not going to give the rail to anyone. So he, he apparently bounced out, and he, he was jumping well, and he was holding his position, and it looked like Jack was dictating the race at the pace he wanted to. But he was keeping the fractions fairly high, in fairness to him. And uh, but six furlongs to go, the horse that was beside him for most of the race decided that he had, he had cried enough. And here was who was coming up on your outside, only Willie Mullins. That's an old Jews. And he was heading, for, heading across for the, for the second last hurdle across the top of Leopardstown. He got a, a flyer of a jump, and, and Willie's just didn't jump it as, as well as maybe he would have liked it. And, um, you know, he came around the home turn, and he had about three lengths off, and I let his, uh, his shout, and I said, you cheered me, Kilkenny. And then I, I decided to stay quiet because there was still one obstacle in the way. <laughs> there was one, sorry, there was two. There was still lads behind, but there was, there was still the final uh, hurdle to jump. So, so he, he, he jumped that reasonably well. And, and uh, you know, uh, it was fairly straightforward from there. He, he was holding the whole way to the line. He actually probably opened up a bit, of a, a bit farther. I think he jumped last maybe three and one by six, you know. Then, so, but... Um, there was a few yahoos like, how does it stand? Pretty loud yahoos are, right? <laughs> I'm sure the great man Willie Mullins was over to you to congratulate you as well, one of the most magnanimous men in racing. I didn't see Willie, but I did meet Harry Kirk and he offered me his congratulations and fairness to him. He didn't uh, offer you a few quid for the horse, did he? Uh, not yet, anyway. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that was in fairness. That was the first thing that came into my mind um, when I when I saw him because um, I think I was doing the racing boss analysis actually that day, and I I don't know what he wrote, but it was probably something to the effect that this lad is valuable. Um, well, I just read uh, what you got. Patrick does an article there in the racing boss once mm. a week, and, and and he was going down through the five, the four days of the festival and the runners he had, and he just came to he just came to the Wednesday and he said the first race. It's like the it's like the first race on Boxing Day on the end of the day that an expensive French recruit who got turned over and he just more or less has the next four the next four letters are mm, that was it. <laughs> so um look at that. I'm sure the horse will turn out to be a decent horse too, you know. We have a we have a photo of how you bud on the screen at the moment, um, if you are watching and uh I just think it's absolutely beautiful because the sh- the sun is shining on his face, Charlie. I think he's probably jumping the last and the Kilkenny colours absolutely clear as day and not a bother in the world on Jack Foley's face and not a horse in sight beside him. Yeah, look at it. It's uh, it's actually on the table here. Uh, Leperstone were good enough to, to send me on a copy of, of that. Of, of him jumping the last, and I'm sure we'll we'll find a bigger one sometime and, and, and put it on the wall, um, not too far away from his mother. So, um, and his half sister as well. But look at um, it, it was a magical day. You know, it's going up to Leperstone taking on. We knew he was decent, but going to Leperstone taking on Willie Garden, Henry, and and the rest. You, you know, yeah. You get a fair idea how good your horse is after that, you know. Is he for sale? Uh, no, he'll, he'll probably take up an entry in, in, in the Cheltenham sale there at the end of the month if he's not sold brightly beforehand, Johnny. Yeah, because I mean, Ger Gilroy's not here, and I'm going to speak for Ger now because Ger has obviously been talking for a long, long time about off the ball lads and Lassie's getting a syndicate together for a horse. I think this is the one, Ger. If you've maybe a quarter of a million or something like that, just ask the bosses to put it together. That could be our first syndicate, Charlie, and you can have a leg in him as well. Well, look, he'll, he'll probably take. Look, he, obviously, the next progression, if he doesn't, if he's not sold, he'll, he'll be entered probably in the, in the winners of one. Yeah, you know the story. But he'll probably take. He'll probably get an entry in the Ballymore just. Just in case um, he, he trades on again, you know. Uh, he's got Absolutely. It was a strange one. Like he, his race was ended up being five seconds quicker than Journey. Uh, what you call the horse? Journey with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next day, at the same race, at the same time, you know, at the same distance. So, uh, we're, I suppose we're entitled to dream big anyway, Johnny. Uh, a lot of dreams are horses, of course, but sure, if you don't dream big, you're going nowhere, you know.
Absolutely, and uh, Friday Night Racing is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. If I could just go back a little bit, so to, um, and I actually remember the dam run in Young Burgal. Um, so, November 2001, so you, you bought this horse for six grand, um, November 2001. Um, what was the thought process there? I know you mentioned it, but to, to buy a mare that turns out to be as f- like phenomenally successful um, in terms of what she's achieved uh, at Stud in that she's already had four winners. Um, Maria's Benefits, you mentioned, won eight races. How are you both potentially the best of the lot? Uh, only one he's made in hurdle, but the sky's the limit. Desert Moore Hill won four races. Anti Cool won four ma- races, maybe at a more modest level. But there must be an, an unbelievable satisfaction in paying a relatively modest amount for a horse that young and she turns out to be as good as she was. Yeah, look at the day I bought her for six grand. Probably realised that, you know, I probably knew she'd probably never leave the place. Uh, you know, the intentions were to buy something that maybe I could race and breed out. And then um, she ended up being the one. But um, that, look at it. it very tell story, Johnny. I, I, I breed, I, I work for a company, Top Isle, an Isle company. Mm. And I, I keep a few stables out the back and I, I breed a few half reds and I breed a few tour reds and uh, usually sell them on. And, and you know, it's a uh, passion. You know, Hurling would have been my first love, but if I got horses, it wouldn't, been, wouldn't have been too far behind it, you know. How did you get into it? Uh, father had a few brood mares on, on, the, on the family farm and uh, I remember him throwing me up with an old grey mare here one time when I was about three years of age. And I never lost the bug, Jenny. Never lost it. I said it a million times on the show. If if you if you put fifty percent, if you put like a thousand kids on a horse or get put them on horses, get send them to a yard for a week, at least half of them would totally fall in love with it. Yeah, it's amazing. Either horses are, and you know, you either like horses or you don't. And uh, yeah, then sure we 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 pestered them to get an old pony and. and uh, Eventually, he caved in, and he, <laughs> we got a pony, and yeah, you know, just did a bit of leisure riding. And I remember, um, you know, if, if that time the Irish uh, were born very well in Daga Can, you had Eddie Mack and Paul Dara, mm. Captain Tom Power, and James Kernan, who did the three in a row. And so, at that time, you'd be taking out the pony, and you'd, you'd thinking you'd be uh, Eddie Mack. And, you know, if, if, the, if the goal couple was on, you, you jump up in the pony, you think you were, you know, Tommy Carmody or, you know, someone like that, of that vintage, you know. Well, that was great. Great how fun was had over over the years, and um, yeah, and, and and then when uh, the mayor, the, the mother was uh, was originally trained by Mag Mullins, mm. and um, she ran a good race in the ace, first time out to be second, and did she? Unfortunately, she she did attendant, so I had to I had to let her off for a year, and we brought her back again, and unfortunately she did a second time, but we went the third time with her, and at that stage, a uh, first cousin of mine had started training um, a chap with name Michael Fitzgerald. And um, so I couldn't look beyond them. I had to give him the mayor, and he was very capable. And um, I remember you used to go down the Saturday morning and you used to ride out two or three lots from him as well, which was, oh. uh, was, was, was brilliant crack. And, you know, I think it was Charlie Swan, whoever, <laughs> or Carver, Carver or Ruby Welch, whoever. So it, was, it was very fun the Saturday morning, you know. What age were you then? Actually, this isn't this is that long ago. I was probably about 13 years of age at this stage. Um, you know, it was 13 or 14 or 15 years, maybe 20 years ago, was, uh, when that mayor was in train. About 2008, whatever we time I was there. But, yeah, about 32 or 3. It was very cracking on Saturday morning. Just go down and spin her out. I, and, uh, I can't be the only one thinking. Brian Cody must have been absolutely delighted that you were riding work on horses on Saturday mornings. Yes, Brian didn't know at the time. I'd say he was retired at the stage. Anyway, uh, Johnny, it was... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was very quick right now. I just love it. What's the buzz like riding a horse? Well, look, to me, it was uh, on the gallops. I was only hacking around. Mm. I wasn't doing anything too fancy, but um, I was, uh, was probably going harder on the pony years ago. <laughs> but, uh, um, look, at uh, you're up there, and, and the, you know, the power is on the and you know, she was a, she, she was a, a bit of a puller, so she was. So I was probably hanging on for dear life, Johnny, through being on. No, it's grand. And for a couple of years while she was uh, in training, you know. So tell us about the mayor now. Um, is she, she said, I think you mentioned a half sister is uh, on the go. Is she still alive? No, unfortunately, she died last year give a, after giving birth to a nice blue Brazil called Paul. Uh, she hemorrhaged the next day, unfortunately, mm. and we lost her at 20 years of age. So what I have on the ground now is a, is a, a yearling, obviously, he's a yearling now um, by Blue Brazil. And I have a probably a, a probably the nicest one I had over. It's a walk in the park, two year old. Oh wow! 
so he's uh, kind of minding him, Johnny, if you know what I mean. I, I definitely so, mind him. <laughs> he's getting well minded. But sure, look at it, you can't mind him any more than the ones beside him either, you know what I mean? So, And I have two uh, half-sisters as well breeding here. So, that's what I have at, at the moment. Um, that's amazing. So you've... Um She's she she's been a phenomenal mare for you, obviously. And the walk in the park for those of you who listen and watching who wouldn't be familiar with walk in the park. Walk in the park is obviously the stallion of Maine and Duvan. Um, good story about him actually. So, um, a friend of mine was up at Willie Mullins one day, and this horse absolutely zoomed by on the gallops, zoomed by, and he said, "What is that?" And Willie Mullins said, "Yeah, that's a little horse called Duvan." So my my mate would be thinking a bit outside the box. So he said. I wonder where the dam of this horse is. And I, I paraphrase here, but I'm fairly sure the dam was based in North Africa, right? So he tried, he, he went over and back to the owner and, and my friend's name was, was Paul, but the owner kept calling him Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul. And they were going over and back and it looked like, he looked for, at various stages, you know yourself, Charlie, that this sale might go through and then it fell through and then it might go through and then it fell through. And of course, John Bond later, uh, the owner is a very, very wealthy man. Oh yeah, look at it. Turned out, uh, uh, you know, I should look at walking the parks are flying there at the moment. You know what I mean? Between John Bond and obviously had Duvan and, and the, you know the four year olds that ran very well last year. And, and um, but look, he, he's an expensive sire, so he'd want to be doing well too. You know, he was standing for about ten grand, wasn't he? Uh, he was. I'd say you wouldn't get him for ten grand, or the colours of it next year. It's uh, um, look, he, he's marked his pride. It's so. Um, uh, actually, it's a funny story. I went down to cover the mayor that time with Getaway, and it just didn't work out. Uh, he had picked up little bit of an injury, so um, Mr. Magner, David Magner, or myself came to an agreement to this cover with Walk in the Park. And it just, you know, some some things in life are sometimes you get lucky in life, uh, Johnny, and uh, it was certainly a lucky cover, you know. Um, and just the, the fi- final thing and how you abode, um the funny thing is and I remember when my cousin's horse Hunter was called when a maiden hurdle at Nace they couldn't sell him it, it's a strange thing but it's almost a lot more fashionable to win a point to point now than a maiden hurdle yeah look they like these 16-3 horses coming off the off the um, off the fine scene and that's where the big money is, is you know what I mean so yeah I don't know well, my lad has, has one he's made in hurdle and one is in good style so I'm hoping he's, he's valuable you know um, I asked a friend of mine, Mark. Um, he's Kerry exiled in Kerry recent years. Said, "Do you know Charlie Carter at all?" And he said, "Went to St. Kieran College, St. Kieran's College, won All Ireland Colleges. I think two or three. Played with Young Ireland, Young Ireland's 1996 to win the county final against my own club's uh, James Stevens. There, first ever. His brother Ollie broke my heart that day. First cousin Ollie was uh, right. He did, <laughs> he did break hearts, all right." Yeah, look at this. Well, we were coming up through the ranks. We had obviously DJ from the same club and Pat O'Neill from the same club as well. And uh, we had been intermediate for a good while, but we eventually got up into senior '92 and and um, and um, took us a couple of years to get at, at senior level. But um, October '96 was a day I'll never be forget, forgotten in the parish. Anyway, that's for sure. Um, we landed our first senior title. We, we we can finish up actually with Harlan now. Um, because you know the career you had, but the fact that you obviously still have a keen interest. What it's often intrigued me. What does it compare? How does it compare to win a club All Ireland and a, and a county? I should look at the to win All Ireland is, is absolutely brilliant. You know what I mean? It's the pinnacle uh, of it. But I mean to win a club uh, a title uh, with the guys that you grew up with. Sure, you know there's no better. Uh, if you said take away, I, I'm going to take away your All Ireland uh, or, or your club. Which one do you want to take away? I'd certainly be keeping me club on any of that, that's for sure. Mm. It's it's I guess it's just so special that you these are the lads you soldiered with since you were knee high to grasshopper. Yeah, look it's the bond that you you know, it's between you it's a special bond between between the parish, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, you, you go for a few pints or whatever and you go up through school and whatever with with them and, and uh, it was certainly a day we'll never forget, you know. Um, what do you make of the championship now? Um, we're talking, as I mentioned, we're talking with James Skehill earlier, um, and King Henry going to Galway. I'm sure not only in Galway, everyone is is, is excited. I'm sure got a lot of people talking to Kilkenny as well. Yeah, look at um, obviously Henry going to Galway did it has created a bit of a store all right. Um, look, it's a good fit for him. Uh, plenty of good talent in plenty of talent in Galway, and always have been. Um, maybe he'll be the the man to. Get them together. Um, obviously, 
you know, you're going to have himself and Brian Cody on the sideline above and balance the slow, or sorry, the Imperial Spark for the mm. for the championship. So it's certainly going to be great entertainment anyway. You know? What's the feeling of Kenny at the moment? Because I suppose watching from afar myself in recent years, um, it's hard to argue that Kenny just Kenny just don't really have the hurlers of the likes of Limerick. Um, or do you think that maybe like th- things could be freshened up a bit because they still seem to hurl to the last minute every year? They 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 basically turn out. Yeah, well, look at Johnny. We're actually having the most glorious twenty years since uh, you know since Brian took over uh, eleven eleven all Ireland since then. Um. You know, sport usually goes in cycle. And, you know, there's, there's plenty of talent in Kilkenny. It's just they mightn't have the experiences. Uh, as, as, uh, you know, they need to. They probably need to go get a few new players. Um, you know, then you have Limerick, who are absolutely flying at the moment. You know, every one of them six foot and bits like bloody uh, mm. yeah, savage men. And, and, and you know, I mean, savage talent is you know a very skillful team as well. Uh, that's, and that shouldn't be forgotten. Um, hurling has changed hugely over the, the last 15 years anyway it's more of a possession game and running game towards Scott Howard yeah one time he just throwed up the corner forward and he won the, it, it was a 50-50 battle and if you won as you were right if you're not it was back down the field to, you know, it's very tactical and very tactical in the last uh, uh, 10 years anyway you know? and is it finally is it true Brian Cody the few quid each way at 25-1 to one? oh just I said Harry <laughs> Brian wasn't even though the horse was running <laughs> More power to me if it did. Uh, more power to you, Charlie. Um, the mayor um, who passed away, um, if you are listening, um, was called Young Borough Gal, and she's been amazingly successful. And this is the beauty of racing, Charlie, as well. The cycle continues. Like Even now, I'm, I'm excited myself to see the walk in the park in a couple of years' time. Um, yeah, and uh, Johnny, before you go, if you, if you can arrange that syndicate, give me a show afterwards, uh, will you? Yeah, as 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 as, I, as Del Boyd say about Rodney, I've given them your word now, so I, I've given you Jar's word that he'll buy the horse anyway. I'll keep a leg of myself, Johnny. We'll have a bit of crack. All the best, <laughs> Johnny. Good talking to you. Okay. That was uh, the great Charlie Carter. Um, I thought we were going to get an exclusive. What actually happened uh, 19 years ago? We didn't quite get that. Maybe Tom Malone will know. He's uh, here after the ads. Friday night racing on off the ball. Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie. Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie And you are welcome back I have given myself a commanding lead in the tow tent follow over Christmas breaking into the top 1500 stables out of 29,000 in the overall competition I'm actually reading this the first time it sounds like it's praise but I'm literally reading this and I don't know this and I can be assure you of one thing it won't last there Danny Mullins is over 100 points back in second place 
you just have to be content with winning the King George, I suppose. Um, he will have to be content with riding the winner of the King George, Tornado Flyer, though he didn't have the horse in his 10 to follow selection. Only 0.2% of players did. And a very quick maths, that's what, one in one in five, five hundred, I think. Jeremy, meanwhile, is close on Danny's heels, just nine points back in third place. Visit tote.e to avail of the tote guarantee on all Irish and UK racing. Tom Bugsy Malone, what's going on? How are you, Johnny? You well? How was your Christmas? Uh, well, like many people, it was very quiet. Just a lot of uh, sitting on the couch watching racing over Christmas, really, to be honest. Avoiding COVID and going home early. Charlie Carter had a good Christmas. Oh, uh, magic. Uh, do you know what, Johnny? I just love hearing those owner breeder stories. I think mm. they're absolutely brilliant. And uh, yeah, and I mean, what a touch as well, going down to get covered by Getaway and end up getting a deal on Walk in the Park, which, as I understand, doesn't happen very often. I just say, I, I'm only speculating here, but I'd say the, the, the breeders that give Charlie a bit of preferential treatment because he was such a hurling great, it just doesn't apply to the likes of you and me. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so at all. No, if we went down for a, a looking for a covering getaway and uh, getaway wasn't available, I don't think we'd get marked up to walk in the park. No. no, um, no. But like walk in the park has been, uh, he's an interesting sire. I think he's had four, he's, he's the top sire of, of four year old maiden winners in point to point, which is obviously the, you know, post Duvan yeah, effect. The, 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 well, it's, it's, the, it's the, yeah, absolutely. But it's, a, it's the winning lottery ticket really when it comes to, you know, breeding and, and uh, you know, turning those horses over at, the, at those big point-to-point sales. You know, you win your 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 four-year-old maiden, and and that's it. That's a it's a really nice it's a nice call, I imagine, to be getting from from Tattersalls or or Goths to say here, will you will you have this fell in the sale? So yeah, oh sorry, obviously it'll be from Tattersalls, but uh, uh, yeah, it's a nice call to be getting to say put this fell in the next Cheltenham sale or whatever. And and uh, after that, you know, you're you're guaranteed sort of fairly large sums of money as has been evidenced by the likes of Ginto and John Bond and whomever since this, but this is like so Charlie is making breeding and racing look literally a walk in the park at the moment but as I referenced on the show like it's really really weird now because point to points were um, you know there were the, the, the local farmer um, he turned his field into a racetrack for the day you put in a few quid and it went to the local hunt or whatever it was everyone had a good day out but then it became professional and it's now like if you win a maiden hurdle and I go back to my, my cousin's horse Hunter's Call who on, obviously went on and won the big race and the big handicap in England when he was uh, trained by Ollie Murphy subsequently but he won a, a maiden hurdle for John Neal in a nace big track won a good maiden hurdle couldn't sell him wasn't, off, wasn't asked for a lot of money for him it's, it's more fashionable now to win a point to point than a maiden hurdle yeah no absolutely and I actually went my for my sins I actually went to Drumahan there on the 30th of December which is the final point to point of the year and the opening four year old maiden I think had uh, 73 entries now obviously all horses birthdays are on the 1st of January so uh, once in two days time all those 73 entries were turning five so you would assume they might look, could potentially uh, reduce in value slightly even though it's you know it's relatively inconsequential but um Winning those four-year-old maidens is so, so important. And what happens now is when you hear Charlie there, he talks about selling his horses with the likes of the Derby sale, the Land Rover sale. They're the, the three-year-old sales of unbroken stores. And that's where these big point-to-point trainers go now to source their talent. So, I mean, it's highly likely that Charlie looked to sell that horse to a three-year-old to get a nice bit of cash for him. Won the big point-to-point yards. The likes of, you know, Tonica Doyle or Colin Ball, one of those lads, or Warren Ewing or whomever will pick him up try to win a four-year-old maiden and then off you go to those big point-to-point sales and that's where uh you know gordon elliott nikki henderson those guys come in and uh, jake mcmanus eddie o'leary come in and pay pay big money for these horses that you know ultimately go on a lot well many of them at, at least go on to become you know ultimately favorites for for supreme novice hurdles or favorites for for Cheltenham champion bumpers down the line or at least that's the hope you know yeah and you mentioned walking the park so the likes of Ginto and so forth and I'm speculating here right so Charlie spends uh, I think he said he bought the mare as a foal for six grand so he spends six grand on the mare now the obviously if you if you pay whatever you pay for a horse you have to look after the horse so it's not a case of six grand and then you know so there's a lot that's why horses are, are sometimes quite cheap anyway fast forward 20 years later if walking the park goes and if just just for argument's sake he goes and wins his four year old maiden in Drumahan or somewhere like that wins it impressively um, hot as stallion basically and jumps racing at the moment half brother um, how you bought as one of maiden hurdle probably graded horse over hurdles walking the park horse could be worth three or four hundred grand 
Uh, potentially, yeah. If he goes and wins, a, if he goes and wins a, a drum hand point to point really well, you're talking about the likes of you know Native River or um, Vanillier won there a couple of years ago. Obviously went and won a, a great one at Cheltenham last year. Um, no more heroes. I mean, all like so many of these big like that. That is like Irish point points now are the are the place where people go to source their talent. Um, it's and I mean Kevin Blake wrote a, an interesting article on on Gordon Elliott and how where his firepower is coming from and it's all you know he's reaping the rewards of spending big in the sales ring at mm. these big sales after after point to points and that's you know that's where a lot of these big horses are coming from when you look at constitution hill he was actually beaten in his point to point he's obviously warm or the favor for the tallworth uh, at the weekend he was actually beaten in his point to point but barry garrity and warren ewing bought him jointly as a three-year-old he was just touched off in his point to point and went to one of those big sales and Paid one hundred and twenty thousand, a hundred or one hundred twenty thousand for him. Goes to Nicky Henderson, and there you go. Now here he is, and he's a you know he's not quite favoured for a supreme, but if he goes and wins at Tallworth, he's disputing favouritism with his with his uh, stable mate John Bond, who's obviously bad. you know the full brother. Yeah, yeah. To uh, to 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 Van. If it sounds like I'm kind of um, tapping Charlie up for a few quid here to do all this promotion of his horses and equine interests, well, I am, to be honest. So, Charlie, you can text me afterwards. Were you uh, tapping up anyone for winners uh, at Christmas? What did you make of it, Tom? There was, like, some pretty remarkable performances at Leopardstown. Obviously, some kind of, maybe some substandard-ish grade ones as well, but uh, proper, proper uh, performances. Galloping Deschamps, I think, was one horse that everyone was talking about. Yeah, I think Galloping Deschamps really... Took the eye out of your head, didn't he? Um, it's sort of looking through, like, and what a what a brilliant RSA or what's it called now? But RSA that's potentially set up himself in Brave Man's game. Looks like we at least if those two get there, we'll have um, you know we'll have a proper race. Maybe at Hoist and you're probably disappointed slightly in England as well. But I wouldn't write him off either. So we look like we've got a crack in RSA shaping up. Hopefully, you know, Gallop and Deschamps can get a bit more experience in before then as well. Um, kind of looking forward. We still have. Um, Bob Ollinger to come in a couple of weeks' time as well in the Kalini Chase. I mean, Willie Mullins dominating the the bumpers. Obviously, it's hardly news, but I mean, is he putting pressure on American Mike at the top of that uh, champion bumper market? Thought that was interesting. I'd be intrigued to see where what happens to Ginto next because I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if he steps up in trip. He just looked an out and out stare at Nace as well. Um, really, really interesting. Dino Blue that won yesterday as well. I mean, see, she's tens for the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. I thought that she just looked really, really spectacular there this week as well. So, um, yeah, it's it's interesting. A lot of the, you notice yourself, Johnny, a lot of the kind of Cheltenham markets tightened up significantly in the back of runs there. And we don't really have, uh, I don't know if there's much kind of juice in those favourites prices, but uh, it's shaping up to be to be very, very interesting over the next couple of months at least. This sounds like a, basically a show that's promoting Walk in the Park. Um, it's a Walk in the Park loving, but we've got to mention Facile Vega out of Qua Vega. Um, won the bumper on the 26th by no less than six lengths, as you mentioned, Willie, absolutely dominating um, bumpers in general at Leopardstown. This is a five-year-old Walk in the Park, um, obviously out of Qua Vega, bred to be okay and can move. Yeah, and she, I... I Another one where that that there wasn't a very well guarded secret. A couple of WhatsApps going around saying take the twenties to the champion bumper before Christmas, and that wasn't that certainly wasn't bad advice. Um, like what she's sort of four to one clear second favorite behind American Mike now, and deservedly so. Obviously, she'll get a bit of an allowance as well. But uh, yeah, it's all there on the page, and you know it's great as well. Like we talk about these horses that go through the sales ring and the like, and they all end up in it. You know with a small handful of owners, but uh, it's great to see um, Fasal Vega retain the, the Hamel and Trail, Hamel, Hammer and Trail Syndicate colours even, and uh, to be carrying those Covega colours. So I thought that was a, a nice little touch for them. And, you know, like, it's great to have a good mare and they're obviously retaining their value much better now, but uh, so often it kind of doesn't really work out for breeders. These brilliant race mares don't always go on to provide or become brilliant brood mares. And there is an older school of thinking that they should, you know, if you want broodmares, you should get them in the uh, in the paddocks earlier. But uh, it's brilliant to see Covega, who had such a long career, go and uh, go and do it in the in with her next generation of talent as well. How would you rate yourself out of ten in terms of um, horses' physique and uh, knowing if they were good or not from looking at them? Uh, I mean, are, there's, it's it's. I know what I know what I like in a horse, but uh, it's kind of difficult to know. Like you heard there, Charlie say about horses these days. It's very much the fashion 
that they want very, very big horses that will, you know, if you go to the store sales now, I mean, we, we sent foals away this year and they they probably were a little bit in the, on the small side because they were born in um, April and May. Like realistically now, I think if you're sending the National Hunt foal in, you probably want them coming out in the next couple of weeks. So they're going to the, so they're going to the foal sales good and big. Um, and size seems to be very, very important and physical scope seems to be very, very important in what traditionally wouldn't have been the case in national hunt sales at least, but you know, it would have been always the case in flat sales, but um, it, size, is, size is so, so important now. It would seem particularly for those guys that are looking to go down that four-year-old um, point-to-point route, route, route with their stock. You know, Charlie said it there, these lads want you know, 16 two, 16 three stores that are just you know, it won't be an issue for them approaching and jumping a jumping a fence age four and, you know, going out and facing these stiff tracks as opposed to, you know, slightly smaller horses that might want a better bit of spring ground or might just take a little bit of time to develop. And, um, you know, it's worth bearing in mind that while I know we've uh, waxed lyrically about this obvious path to riches where you just breed a horse, send him to the derby sale, mm. then go in a point to point and just cash in your chips. I mean, <laughs> that's that's very much the 1%. It's as um, it's so simple that's as that. Bear in mind as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you thought Tom Malone were handsome, what about the, the, the horse on the screen here? This is Walk in the Park. This is Charlie's Walk in the Park, uh, taken last July. Um, an absolute beaut. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, Bugsy. No, I can't, but... Um, all of the, that's one of the things about walking in the park is that generally he does stamp his stock and like that, you know, for the for the lads who, who go by at the store sales, he's very, very attractive, not just from his page point of view, but because he does tend to give them a, a really good physical stamp. It's it's um it's very, very attractive. And like I said, from that point of view as well, of you know they're just gonna be able to handle a point to point age four, which not which not all horses are, but you know, we you need to bear that in mind as well. And um, like I said, in sales, a lot of it is is fashion, and uh, as as people have, like, although with Walk in the Park, his sales figures are strong, and obviously, you know, he's he's backed it up in the point to point sphere. But it was worth bearing in mind. I think in the first, I think first twenty five or so four year old maidens this year, they were sired by I think it was something like seventeen or eighteen different stallions. So okay, um, it, it, there is a there is a, a widespread of of um of talent there. And it's something that actually comes up in conversation plenty while Walk in the Park does, you know, generate plenty of headlines. There are so many good value sires out there when you go and you you look beyond the Coolmore Rose and you look, I mean, remember we did the Stallion Trail with uh, with Off the Ball a couple of years ago when we could actually go out and do the Stallion Trail. It was absolutely brilliant. Got to go into like the Boards Mill and that. And uh, that particular year in Boards Mill, they had... Um, like Kalanisi and Court Cave and I can't, can't remember the other stallion they had who's actually passed away now but of the four kind of smaller stallions that they had all of them had had group one winners that year and they've um, since gotten Poets Word as well of course the a brilliant flat horse from Michael Stout he's based over here now as well and just seen some of his stock in the foal sales this year as well looked look absolutely brilliant so yes those big name signs are brilliant as well, but there's lots of talent across the studs in Ireland and it's well worth um, getting out those Weatherby's calendars at the start of the year and having a good look through because, uh, like I said, and there were 17 or 18 sires across those um, four-year-old point-to-point winners at the start of the year. So, yeah, the walk in the parks will definitely attract the... Uh, Will definitely attract the uh, the big price tags, but there's there's lots of value to be had for for breeders in Ireland. Yeah, I think they had Mount Nelson as well at Boards Mills, who was they did, up. and he was such an unfortunate he loss was. to them as well. Um, he died about three years ago, um, and yeah, looking to see where the next one Mount Nelson will come from. But that was a really good acquisition by them to get to get Poet's Word in there, and uh, like I said, he's kind of a, a Dubawi National Hunt, which just you know can add that bit of class and speed on the page as well. I mean, if you've good national hunt mare with proven stamina, it's no harm to get a bit of speed in there in the page as well. Yeah. And that's what you get with Poe's word. I, I think that's actually a good theory as well. I think um, sort of cheapish miler type stallions can actually sometimes offer better value than your traditional national hunt stallions just to implant that bit of speed that'll be offset by the, the stamina of the dam. Charlie Carter just uh, texted in, that was last July that photo was taken. May have brown envelope envelope ready for you as well, so I'm delighted with that. He's, I think he's, he's obviously he's obviously read my listen, mind there, Bugsy. Listen, uh, owner breeders, the, you're, whatever <laughs> way you're going to make a sale, you got to make a sale when you when you're an owner breeder. Everything everything is for sale, and uh, you know you get a bit of promotion or 
or whatever way you can do it, it's, it's best to do it. I tell you what, Charlie, right? Just bring myself, Ger, and Tom Malone down to Kilkenny for a nice uh, few pints, nice meal, bit of steak. What, Bob's your uncle, really. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds, sounds like a plan, Johnny. Great city that Kilkenny is, and hopefully we'll be returning to normal uh, very soon. Before we wrap up, what horse at the moment are you most looking forward to seeing at Cheltenham? Um, the, the, the Gold Cup picture looks a bit smudged, but maybe some of the other races um, a little bit clearer. Yeah, I thought the Gold Cup picture just looks... I think it looks brilliant now because you, you can't help but feel... I don't know, I just, Manel Indo is 8-1. to one. I just think that looks like an absolutely cracking... He looks like an absolutely cracking each way bet. Can't wait to see Honey Suckle come back as well. I'm just going to go, have a go with the, the Irish champion hurdle. I mean, slightly away from that, I mentioned that... Um, uh, Dina Blue, who won there for Jake McManus during the week, looks like she could, like she could be absolutely amazing. I mean, we always like to have a potential mayor's novice runner or winner, and she just looked different level there. And obviously, you know, it was a bit of a, it wasn't the greatest race in the world, but she couldn't have won it any easier. And there was some collateral form on offer. Um, of course, I'm most looking forward to galloping this shot, but just thought again that that run over Christmas is magic. I can't leave. I was looking through the champion hurdle and trying to think who might run where. And the way Darva Star bounced back to form, he had a bit of rain. Bit of rain, Johnny. Come on, Bugsy. Come on. <laughs> I mean, he, he hadn't won a race. He hadn't won in about three years or something. Yeah, back over hurdles though. Mm. He just hates jumping fences. Hates jumping fences. Not um, his you, thing. you wouldn't know what Gavin Cromwell. Uh, in fairness, happy New Year to you, Tom, and uh, see you, you racing too, soon. You too, Johnny. Take it easy. Yeah, that was Tom Bugsy Malone and we obviously had Charlie Carter uh, on earlier. Um, lovely story when you buy a mare for such little money and all those years later, 20 years later, she's still producing horses and um, there is that poignancy then when um, the mare obviously passes away and um, such is life, but uh, I can guarantee you that there is that affection there that if um, when a horse like that does pass away, it almost does feel like a death in the family and um, she, her legacy will live on and you know I'm certainly fascinated to see how that walk in the park will do that beautiful beautiful two-year-old that we saw in the photo there. Friday Night Racing and Off the Ball is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every race and moment. Visit hri.ie. Friday Night Racing on Off the Ball. Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie.